Hey everyone, thank you for stopping by the Minnesota Homestead. Today we're going to talk about our native bees. You know I love my honeybees. I spend a lot of time sharing some of our journey with you guys here and you know that I adore them and that they are super important for our planet, but they get all the limelight all the time. So today I want to talk to you about some of our native pollinators. Um, I'm going to be giving you some information. We're going to talk about how great they are and I'm also going to be putting up some mason bee houses and building some bumblebee houses. I am putting up some bee houses for mason and leaf cutter bees today. I had wanted to build some nice robust ones that are going to be reusable year after year after year myself this year, but of course we all know how time gets away, so it's not something I've been able to do this year. Because I want to do that on my own next year, I did buy some fairly cheap, easy to grab bee houses for this year. Um, some of the issues that something pre-made like this has um, are that similar to a honey beehive, you need to be able to clean things out, make sure there aren't any uh, diseases and pests and things getting in. With a house like this, nothing here is removable. I can't take any of these out. When you're making a good hive or purchasing a, I keep using the word hive, even though it's not a hive, it's a house. Um, years of beekeeping have uh, changed up my vernacular a little bit, I guess. Um, but what you want to be able to do is have these be removable or and or replaceable so that you are able to get things out, clean it out, make sure that you aren't allowing any diseases, pests and things like that to build up in there. You don't need, there aren't a lot of things that you need to make your bumblebee house. Uh, the one that I'm making today is going to involve a terracotta pot with a hole in the top. And this is about, I think 12 inches-ish. So you want it to be a fairly decent size. You need something to put over the top. I just have the bottom <laughs> of this terracotta pot. You need some kind of hose or tubing that is gonna be big enough for a bee to zip in and out. You need some kind of wire or something of the sort to keep the bedding that you're gonna use uh, off the ground so it doesn't get all wet and kind of icky and stuff. And then you need what you're actually going to make your nest out of. Everything recommends that you have something from a rodent's nest or something similar um, because bees actually really love to use abandoned rodent nests as their home. So if you can find one or if you have a pet mouse or something like that, that's really helpful. Of course, we have 40 plus acres here, so I know there are rodent nests all over the place, but I have not sought one out. So today, I am just going to be getting some dry grass and moss from around the area and using that instead. I'm placing my bumblebee hive here against this rock so they have some windbreak from the northern winds as those come in. And the first thing I'm gonna do is dig a small trench for my tubing. There are five puncture marks in the bottom of my tubing here so that if any water gets in instead of bees, it's gonna drain out before it gets into the nest. Now that I have it all dug out, I'm gonna pop it in and cover it up to keep it exactly where I want it in the ground.
have our tubing going down underneath the ground. And again, it has those five holes to let out any water. It's going in to the wire that is underneath the actual nest bedding. On top of it, we have this pot to keep them nice and safe. And we have um, covered that with mud around the outside and that'll dry and make sure that nobody is sneaking in underneath and that there's no air and cold getting in. And on top, we have some rocks and then the um, just top here, which could again be a piece of slate or anything. Uh, and the rocks are keeping that off of the hole so that there's air circulation. The bumblebee house is ready to go, even though it doesn't smell like rodent. Hopefully some ladies will still find it intriguing and a queen will head on in. And then they don't do the same thing as honeybees. They do con congregate a fair amount. They're definitely a social bee, but at most you're going to get a couple hundred bees. But hopefully we have a queen that decides to move in and then a little bit of a hive or a social group that'll follow behind. You can see that we have this right along the outside of our orchard, closest to our blueberries. One of the things that is so important, of course, is variety. And so we want to have our native bees as well as our honeybees. And the bumblebees in particular add such a unique aspect to pollination. There are some flowers and plants blueberries amongst them that have their pollen so deep down that it can't be reached by most pollinators. And bumblebees do something called buzz pollination. Look it up, you'll find some awesome videos going way into detail about what this is and maybe some cool pictures of it happening. But bumblebees are a very large bee comparatively and they will shiver or what, I don't know, shake their bodies around in such a way at this frequency that it actually jars the pollen in there free and the pollen will explode right out. So without bumblebees in our orchard, we would not have pollination of our blueberries. So we've got our honeybees right there. Here we've got a mason slash leafcutter bee house. But without this, and again, I don't know if they'll move into this house, but we have bumblebees all over the place. But without bumblebees, our blueberries are not getting pollinated. How crazy is that? So next time you're hearing somebody wax poetic about honeybees, absolutely encourage them on that. Honeybees are so important. They are so incredible. But our native bees are truly just as, and in some ways more, important. So make sure you also get mason bees, leaf cutter bees, bumblebees, carpenter bees, sweat bees. The don't think people really keep those last couple ones, but they could maybe, I don't know. Um, and then of course, butterflies and all of those, get them into the conversation as well so people understand the importance of that variety. So thanks again for hanging out with me. Hit that subscribe button down below and the little follow notification so you're always updated when we've got something new coming out. And I will see you next time at the Minnesota Homestead.